The scene opens with an unidentified man strapped to a bed in a mysterious looking room. There are several pieces of medical equipment attached to his body, indicating that he is either sick or injured. Soon he regains consciousness, and a voice on the microphone inquires if he remembers his name. The unidentified man replies that he is Raph Hanks, a famous political campaign manager. However, when the voice asks him if he knows the president, he remains silent. The movie then flashes back to five years ago, where Raph is at the peak of his career. He is currently campaigning for James Stevens, an overwhelming favorite candidate for the U.S. presidential election. When Raph peeks through his office, he notices several thousand people chanting for James. Even all the TV channels are sure that it is going to be a one-sided victory. This makes Raph very proud, as James was once a nobody. In fact, he was despised by all his friends friends and family members for something he did in the past. His life was on a downward spiral, until Raph found him and changed his fortune. In the next scene, we see Raph talking to his assistant, Maura McGowan. He is so full of himself that he has written a book called Wunderkind, which means being successful at a young age. Raph also boasts that he wants a movie dedicated to him, and that Justin Timberlake should play his character. And if we can't get JT, then uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe Chalamet? He continues bragging about his accolades, but right then, they are informed that the election results are out. As Raph and Mora enter James's room, they are taken aback to see everyone with a gloomy face. In a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that James overwhelmingly lost the election, even in his home state of New Jersey. Enraged, he chastises Raph for being a total failure before firing him on the spot. This hurts the latter's ego so badly that he plunges into a deep abyss of anxiety. Okay, fine, we'll, we'll get Michael Sarah to play me in the movie. Cut to several years later, Raph is still not recovered from the traumatic experience. He has since quit his political career and spends most of his time at the bar drinking. Gone are the days where he used to think of making his own movie with Justin Timberlake as the lead actor. The country is also going through a tough period because of high unemployment rate, high crime rate, and several other negative reasons. One day, as Raph is drinking at his usual spot, a news report on TV reveals that an 11-year-old YouTuber named Oliver Foley has announced his candidacy for the upcoming presidential election. He is posted a video on his channel in which he promises to bring peace and happiness amongst his countrymen if he comes into power. But being a kid, Oliver also promises to provide everyone with free video games, as according to him, they improve hand-eye coordination. I'm voting for Ollie. Raph, who is watching this in a drunken state, becomes impressed. With a smile on his face, he then hatches a plan. Raph believes that in these tough times, most people will vote for the kid as he is genuine, honest, and sweet. He also takes it as the perfect opportunity opportunity to reinvigorate his career. So, without giving it a second thought, Raph decides to get back to politics. Chalamet, here I come. The next day, he visits the Foley residence and has dinner with the family. Oliver's parents are happy that their son has gone viral on the internet, but they believe that he was just joking. At the tender age of 11, it is simply not possible to get into politics, let alone govern a country. However, Raph, who is desperate to get his career back on track, thinks otherwise. He explains that Oliver has something which the other politicians don't have, a genuine connection with the public. Using this, he can easily amass a lot of followers and win the election. Raph states that even if Oliver doesn't become the president, he will still be a celebrity, which will earn him millions in endorsements. Hearing all this, the parents eventually allow Raph to lead their son in the presidential campaign. Later that night, Oliver records another video, where he talks about all the reforms he is going to make once he becomes the president. For instance, there will be three holidays a week. The winter holidays will be extended by a month. All the Star Wars movies will be banned. Woo! Ollie. Every single person in the country will be given a video game of their choice, and so on. In no time, the video goes viral, and so Oliver's campaign officially begins. The very next day, we see him making promises in front of a large audience. He also performs an impressive dance routine, which he posts on his YouTube channel to get more recognition. All this is being supervised and coordinated by none other than Raph. He is finally making up for the debacle he suffered some years ago. As the days pass, Raph becomes so popular and loved that even his ex-assistant more comes back to him. In the next scene, we are shown that the 11-year-old boy has managed to amass a serious fan following. Despite his young age, many people believe that he is the right person to lead the country because of his pure heart and because, let's face it, we'd all do anything for a three-day weekend. They are ready to take the risk, claiming that nothing can be worse than the state they are in. In this way, Raph continues leading the campaign to success, but as Oliver gets popular, he also becomes arrogant. The cheeky brat regularly berates his parents and other staff 
half without any remorse. In particular, he doesn't like going to the doctor, as he is scared of needles. Raph, who is always with the boy, notices all this, but doesn't say a word. A few more days pass and the presidential debate is just around the corner. Raph has hired some of his best politicians, teachers, and other scholars to educate the boy, but to no avail. No matter how talented and woke Oliver is, he is still an 11-year-old. He can't grasp the basics of politics, let alone face the cameras or go up against some of the most experienced politicians in the country. Nonetheless, Raph decides to proceed with the debate, as they have come too far to fail. Just say the thing about the video games again, kid. Unfortunately, the decision turns out to be a disastrous one, as Oliver the Kid humiliates not only himself, but his entire team on live television. When the going gets tough, he even calls his mommy to take him home. Everyone sympathizes with Oliver as he is just an 11-year-old, but as for Raph, he is again accused of failing the campaign. So, the very next day, he again reverts to alcoholism. He is now done with politics, as no matter how hard he tries, he buries himself in an even deeper grave. One day, Mora visits Raph at his usual drinking spot and reveals that she met the Foley's earlier. Turns out, they are going through a tough period. Not because Oliver lost the presidential debate, but because of their beloved dog, Homer, dying of cancer. Hearing this, another idea strikes Raph's drunken mind. Since people sympathize with dogs, he wants Oliver to make another video, in which he will share his happy memories with Homer. The plan is to gain the attention of the people and ultimately win them over. Mora thinks that it is a bad idea, as it could easily go south, but Raph simply says, it's time to make or break. We gotta use this dog cancer. This time, the plan finally works. As soon as the emotional video hits the internet, it becomes a viral sensation. People start pouring Oliver with their deepest sympathies and once again turn to his side. The movie then cuts to a few days later, where it is revealed that Oliver has won the election by a landslide. He is now officially the President of the United States of America. A massive rally takes place to celebrate his victory, where millions of people line up on the streets. It it is evident that Raph's idea has won the hearts of the Americans. Dog's still dead, though. <laughs> Later, after the celebrations are over, Oliver and his team finally arrive at the White House. He is ecstatic to start his tenure as the president, but at the same time, his arrogance has reached sky heights. Oliver orders his cabinet members to distribute video games to all the citizens of the country, and when they hesitate, he threatens to fire them. He even disregards his mom and Raph when they try to explain that the decision is a bad one. So, with no options left, the cabinet members agree and leave the room. As the days pass, Oliver's outrageous demands continue to increase. We see that he has installed a popcorn machine inside his office and brought a bunch of penguins from Antarctica. Moreover, he has deployed a swing in place of the presidential chair. So far, I see no issues here. The following day, he orders several dogs to be brought to his office as he wants to adopt one. However, when he finds out that all of them are female, he angrily asks them to be taken out. Oliver claims that his beloved Homer was a male, so he wants a dog resembling him. Raph and the other members are stunned to see his arrogance. Dude, this guy's sexist towards animals. But nonetheless, they comply without uttering a word. The same day, the vice president approaches Oliver and requests that he undergo a medical examination. However, the arrogant brat starts shouting, saying that he is well and fine. When the VP asserts that it is a rule made compulsory by the Congress, Oliver orders the Congress to be dissolved immediately. He then starts throwing his ball around the room, hurting some people in the process. Worried that something terrible is about to happen, Raph later meets the military chief and asks him to educate the boy. He wants to make sure that no one gets affected by Oliver's abrupt and childish antics. Unfortunately, the military chief takes this as an offense and he calls Raph a traitor. The latter immediately apologizes, but the damage has already been done. That evening, Raph again starts worrying about his career. Despite everything that he has achieved, he believes that he has made the the wrong choice by helping Oliver become the president. However, his best friend and only confidant, Mora, argues that the 11-year-old is doing a good job. She says that Raph is simply overthinking things and that he should take some rest. However, our protagonist is not going to let the injustice slide so easily. So, the following day, he approaches Oliver while he is playing golf in his office. He wants to politely make the boy understand that whatever he is doing is wrong. Raph then grabs a golf stick and starts explaining the responsibilities of a president to the country. They should be brave and lead the people in difficult times. Unfortunately, Oliver takes it the wrong way and becomes angry. He starts throwing things around and demands an apology. But this time, Raph is having none of it. He bluntly refuses to apologize and even calls the boy stupid. Hearing this, Oliver orders his security to take action. Oh, you really stepped in it now, big boy. 
and as the camera pans out, we see blood splattered on the walls. Following this, we are taken back to the mysterious room that we saw at the start of the movie. Raf is tied to a bed, and it is revealed that he survived the gunshot wounds. However, due to the excessive loss of blood, he has to be operated on immediately. In the last scene, the doctor assigned by Oliver finally arrives. He is another 11-year-old boy who probably has no experience in surgery. To make matters worse, he wants to finish the procedure ASAP so that he can go go back to playing video games. The movie ends as poor Raph screams in horror as his life is slowly taken away from him.